When you're getting started with TIG welding, it's nice to have a stash of filler metals that you're going to use, but it can be confusing with all the different numbering systems and different sizes to know what to get. So I'm going to break it all down for you in this video. Hey, welcome to the shop. Let me show you the filler metals that I use the most. We'll start off with steel, then we'll talk about aluminum, stainless steel, and even a little bit of braze alloy. So first of all, with steel, there's ER70S dash, you'll have something after that. The most common is ER70S dash two when it comes to TIG welding. Welding. Another one that's commonly uh, cut is a wire that's often used in MIG, ER70S-6. Now the difference between those wires is pretty subtle and it has to do with some of the alloying elements, primarily uh, relating to deoxidizing your weld. And honestly, either one of those uh, will work just fine. For most applications, you probably won't be able to tell a difference, but I typically buy ER70S-2. Now it comes in these cut lengths and it's typically copper colored because it's coated on the outside. It's available in a variety of different sizes. Now the size that you use is gonna be a little bit of personal preference and typically will relate to the thickness of material you're welding and the size of weld you're trying to put in, right? Because if you're trying to put in a particular size of fillet weld and you use really small wire, you're gonna to have to feed a lot of that wire in as you go where a larger wire, you might not have to feed quite so much in. But on the flip side, a larger wire acts as a heat sink, which can be good for uh, larger welds. But when you get to smaller welds, it can make it really difficult to be able to add it to your puddle and get a really precise result. Now the sizes that I use are typically 1 16th of an inch, and uh, that's right around one and a half millimeters. That's what I use for most of the work that I do, which is on plates that are right around an eighth of an inch uh, thick or three millimeters thick. But I also like to keep some smaller filler metal around. This is 45 thousandths of an inch, which is right around one millimeter. And this filler metal is really great when I'm getting down to materials that are right around a sixteenth of an inch or uh, you know one and a half millimeters thick because it gives me just a little bit of control. Now let's talk a little bit about aluminum. If you're gonna be welding aluminum, there are two really common filler materials uh, that are used. One is 4043 and the other is 5356. Now the common size that I get for both of those is 3 seconds of an inch. It's a little bit larger than I'll typically use on steel because aluminum welds tend to take a little bit more filler metal. At least that's been my experience. 4043, first of all, it's a lower strength material. It uh, is very fluid so it'll flow in and typically gives a little bit smoother bead overall without quite as much of a rippled appearance. And drawback of 4043 is that uh, if you go to anodize your parts, you wanna have a color added to them with an anodized surface, you're gonna end up with a bit of a color mismatch most of the time. Now 5356, on the other hand, is a little bit higher strength. In my experience, gives typically a little bit shinier weld with more of a stack of dimes appearance, and it will anodize quite well. Now one of the drawbacks with 5356 is prolonged uh, use at an elevated temperature is likely to result in some issues down inside the material and you can end up with some corrosion or cracking problems. For most of the common materials that you'll weld, like a 6061 uh, aluminum alloy, you can use either of these filler metals, but uh, aluminum alloys aren't compatible with one another across the board. And the reasons for that get very complex, but most of the filler metal manufacturers have a chart out there that you can get. If you just Google aluminum filler metal chart, uh, you'll find them from Alcotec, Aesop, from Hobart, you know, a lot of those companies, you can pull up a big chart and it'll show what aluminum alloy you have on one side of the weld, the aluminum alloy you have on the other, and which materials are compatible as far as filler metals as well as what kind of properties to expect when you use that filler metal. I use 5356 for most of what I do. I find it works quite well for me. Next, let's talk about stainless steels. Now, stainless steels, there's a wide variety of stainless steels, but the most common that you'll probably encounter are 300 series stainless steels 
That means that it has a three digit designator that starts with a three and those are not magnetic. They're pretty corrosion resistant and that's because they have an addition of chromium that creates a stable oxide layer on the surface that keeps the iron in it from reacting with the oxygen and rusting. Now they also have a significant addition of nickel and that's what makes them non-magnetic and it makes them workable. Now for these type of materials, there are different filler metals available, but most of the time when you're welding like a 304, which is really common, you would use a 308L filler metal. Another common stainless steel filler material is 309L. And the difference with 309L is it has a little bit more of that chromium and nickel and that makes it possible to weld a stainless steel to like a regular carbon steel. So if you are doing a dissimilar weld where you're welding, you know, mild steel to something that's stainless steel, that's where that 309L is gonna come in handy but for most work, 308L is gonna be pretty good. Now when I'm working with stainless steel, it's typically pretty thin stuff. And it's right around, you know, maybe a 16th of an inch, one and a half millimeter thick sheet. And for that, I use this 45 thousandths of an inch or one millimeter filler metal. So similar to the steel where I'd use on that thickness, uh, thinner material, I'll use that on stainless steel as well. And that works pretty well for me. Let's just talk about one more that's come in really handy for me. This is silicon bronze. It's a brazing alloy. Now the difference with brazing is instead of actually trying to melt the base metal, you will be trying to heat up the base metal. In all reality with TIG brazing, sometimes you melt it a little bit. But uh, the goal is just to heat it up and to use that hot material to melt a different type of alloy on and silicon bronze is the one that I like to use. And it can be really nice if you're welding together materials that are dissimilar or some that are hard to weld, like a harder tool steel, for example. You might have issues with cracking or things like that if you were to weld it, but you could braze it and do so quite successfully. Let me just summarize and wrap up with a shopping list that I would get if I were getting started with TIG today and just wanted to get the bare essentials. I'd get 1 16th of an inch or one and a half millimeter ER 70S2 rod for steel. I would get 3 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter uh, diameter 5356 filler metal for aluminum and I would get some 45 thousandths or 1 millimeter diameter 308L filler for stainless steel and then if you wanted to get some silicon bronze alloy I'd get that in 3 seconds of an inch and I think between those four you'd find that you are able to cover a wide variety of jobs and then you just pick up a different alloy or a different diameter if you need it for a particular job as they come along, which I've done, but then you'll have a base core set. Now, let me know down in the comments if there are particular fillers that you like to use or you have any thoughts on this that might help us all out here in the community. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.